Can I put my hands here? Jesus. Jesus was born on Christmas. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Me and Jesus. The closest to Christmas? Yeah, anyone. Uh, me. Because mine is October, Gwen's in March. We celebrate Jesus' birthday and presents. How about Axel? What is your favorite thing about Christmas? <laughs> birthday. Birthday. Jesus and me. Is that uh, you get to celebrate with your family and exchange gifts and remind the story of Jesus Christ when he was born. We can spend time with family and friends. The presents, maybe. Um, the Christmas tree. Go with my family. Um, decorating Christmas trees. Um, about that, I can't. Our family can spend the whole day together. The present? Present. My favorite things about Christmas is the gifts that you'll get and family and yeah and cookies and yeah food. When God was born so, in Christmas Day, Jesus was born in a farm. He was placed in a crib made out of hay. How about Axel? Axel, do you know anything? Where's the father? Where's the father? Where's the father? His father was Joseph and the mother was Mary. Uh, Daddy. Waktu Natal pernah makan makan sama keluarga di kota Cane. Grinch. Well, Jesus was born to uh, may our sin disappear. Where was Jesus born? Where was Jesus born? At like a farm thingy, like for sheep. The mother. Mary and the poor man. <laughs> My favorite Christmas story is about a Christmas carol. Well, it's about a miser called Ebenezer Scrooge, and then he disliked Christmas, and then soon he was visited by three ghosts Ghost of Christmas Present, I mean, Ghost of Christmas Past. Ghost of Christmas Present and Ghost of Christmas Future. It started in Bethlehem when there was a star and there were three shepherds that followed it. And they see Jesus Christ on a, you know, that kind of crib. And then they give gifts representing those three gifts of Jesus Christ. And then, yes, everybody celebrated because the Savior was born to earth. Um, Mary said that everyone that um, Jesus was born and then so the wife can make the, for the place the born thing thing that you make it born the place. What do you want for Christmas Axel? I just want to celebrate Christmas with my family. That's all. Good to keluarga yang di luar negeri. Hi. You say first, Gwen. Don't know. Toy. Another dog. 
All I want for Christmas is that our family can gather together, we can unwrap our gifts together, and we have a happy day. What do you want for Christmas? The new house. What I want for Christmas is um, Robux, or kind of like Roblox currency. Get some toys, put in front of the Christmas tree and get it together and sing Christmas songs. What toys do you want? <laughs> I don't really want any toys. We want like new toys because we don't really know how to open them, but the more we open them, the more it gets funner to play with them. I want the pandemic to be over so we can go to church and school again! Yay! <laughs> Not cook, but bake. Bake a cookie. Gingerbreads. Cookies. Cookies. And spaghetti. Same. Christmas cake. Fried rice. Sugar cookies, but mommy don't know how to bake. <laughs> Aladdin. My favorite Christmas movie is Home Alone. My Little Pony Christmas. Uh, the Grinch. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, stand and we still run away, no, no, no. A line, just a short line. Yeah, that's fine. Merry, Merry Christmas. That's all. <laughs> okay. no, just a really short line. Joy to the world. The God. The Christmas is absolutely my favorite holiday of the year. I love the Christmas decorations, the music, the food, the gifts, just a lot of things. If you have a favorite thing on Christmas, let us know and do share with us in the chat. Wherever you're at or maybe you're hosting a watch party at your home, it's all good and it's powerful that we as a church can gather together in any way that we can to make it, it work. It's awesome and it's powerful. Untuk teman-teman yang merasa lebih nyaman dengan bahasa Indonesia, kami sudah menyediakan pilihan terjemahan bahasa Indonesia. Jadi, kalian tinggal klik tombol caption atau CC di bawah ini. Right now, we just want to take a moment. We want to celebrate all who gives. Thank you to those who have been generous in this season. We know it hasn't been easy financially and with your time, but we're grateful for you and grateful for it. God is on the move and He's doing amazing things. Remember that we're believing it for you. You can give via online transfer, scan our QR code, and find more information on icmedan.com plus giving. It's gonna be a good season. It's gonna be a wonderful Christmas this year, regardless of what. We are gonna focus and lean in in the presence of God. Hey guys, 
We are so excited for Christmas next week. This year will be a little bit different, but we won't let it stop us from celebrating Christmas. Mark this day on your calendar. December 24th. It's gonna be a time where we worship together and it's at 8 p.m. on YouTube, so join us. And then the next day, December 25th, on the Christmas day itself, Pastor Chris will send a special message. As usual, it's 10.30 in the morning on YouTube. So make plans to spend your Christmas with us, invite your friends and family, and you can have a close watch party as well. Right now, we're just gonna take a moment to worship. I think it's gonna be really special for us just to be in this moment during Christmas season. We're gonna worship like we always do. We wanna encourage you to lean in with us in this moment and we'll do that together as a church. Amen. Born unto us this day a Savior Give from heaven to a major Hope of the world a life for all mankind All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time So lift up your voice and see now it's
For years, I've been told of all sorts of stories. Adventurous ones, cautionary tales, and some that inspire bravery against all odds. But there was one story greater than any other, a true event. The storyteller not only entered the story he authored, he is the story. From the beginning he was there. Everything that was, was because of him. It was his life that brought our characters to life. And it's his life that is our light. He shines in the shadows, and the shadows cannot shut him out. Hey church, happy Sunday, and I think it's close enough to be able to say Merry Christmas. I'm uh, now in our home state of Alabama. I'm actually at my cousin's house in his studio, and he was so gracious enough to help us with the recording this week. But we um, are home in the U.S. right now, and having Christmas, spending the holidays with our family, it's been about eight years since we've um, been back to Alabama to be with our family for the holidays. And so we're super excited. Our family is super excited and it's just been a great, a great time. Uh, but anyways, I am so excited about this series that we're in, the cast of Christmas. We've been so blessed by the speakers that we've had these last couple of weeks and learned so much. And next week on Christmas Day, our very own Pastor Chris will be back sharing God's word with us. I know that he's been praying for all of you and working hard to prepare a special message uh, of God's word to bring to you. So it is going to be a super awesome blessing for each one of us. But today I have the honor to be able to share about one of my favorite Bible people in the Bible, and it's Mary, the mother of Jesus. So we'll get right into it. Um, you know, sometimes when we hear the Christmas story, I think that we can get a bit um, just used to hearing it, you know, the story, the Christmas story of Mary, the virgin that, you know, was greeted by the angel and that she gave birth to God's son. And it can just become like a normal story for us. But, you know, this week is I've been just praying and I've been just reading over the scriptures and I was just once again um, in awe of this incredible, uh, incredibly awesome event that happened. And I could hardly even read through the scriptures um, without crying, imagining just all that she went through. So we're going to get into that today. And I believe that God is going to touch your heart. But I decided to title this message, The Christmas Story Through Mary's Eyes. And this story begins with God's messenger, um, the angel Gabriel. He appeared in this small village. And the, the, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, whose name means hero of God, appeared on Mary's doorstep one day. Mary was about probably 13 or 14 years old, living in this tiny village of Nazareth. Nazareth was actually so small that it didn't even appear on the maps in the first century. And Gabriel came looking for this girl who was about to play a monumental role in human history. And God chose her for the task of bringing his own son into the world. So she must have been a super special uh, young woman. And let's start uh, in the book of Luke chapter one, verses 26. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. 
Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever and his kingdom will never end. I mean, can you just ask yourself, like, why Mary? She actually carried God, the son, in her womb. There was no one ever closer to God. And there was no one who had a greater connection to Jesus. But why? Why did God send the angel Gabriel to find this young girl, Mary? And I believe that God looks with favor on the, on the lowly, that you know, she was humble and she had a heart for God and she was willing to wholly give herself to whatever God had asked her to do. So let's continue in the book of Luke chapter one, verse 34. In Mary's response, Mary asked the angel, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say that she was barren or she couldn't have child, but she is with child with a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. And Mary responded, I love this part. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Man, I love her response. In another version, it says, I am the Lord's servant. May your words to me be fulfilled. Basically, she's saying, I am your servant, God. You can use me in whatever way you want to use me. Man, wow. How awesome that this angel came to her, gave her this news, and she just immediately responded, yeah, I'm your servant. Use me however you want to. You know, uh, for those of you guys that don't know me, um, Pastor Chris and I have four children. Uh, We have one daughter and three boys and one granddaughter and one granddaughter on the way. And God has really, truly blessed our family and blessed our life. But um, that wasn't always the case. We actually became Christians um, after we were married. We had been in a relationship for many years. And then um, shortly after we got married is when we became Christians. But Um, we were actually high school sweethearts and I got pregnant at the age of 14. And, you know, as you can imagine, I got pregnant at 14 and then had our daughter at 15. And then at 16, we got married. So here we are, two teenagers in high school, trying to be parents, trying to, you know, live as husband and wife. And we were just a mess. And Shortly after we were married, um, someone came and shared the gospel with my husband and then, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And then a few months later, I gave my heart to the Lord and God just fixed our family and he worked many miracles in our family. But thinking about how young Mary was, it, it just couldn't help but remind me of being a teenager and becoming a mother. And, you know, I remember when it came time for me to have my daughter in the hospital, I was having her in this hospital. It was more of like an inner city hospital. Um, It wasn't really on the safe side of town. It it wasn't really the hospital where you would get the best treatment. And, you know, and on top of that, um, being a teenage mom, I didn't really get the best treatment. And we were just talking about this recently, and it just kind of brought me back to that time. And I remember that, you know, the doctors in this certain hospital, they were actually not doctors yet. They were doctors in training. So I always said, like, I felt like I was a guinea pig or we kind of say like an experiment patient. I felt like I was an experiment patient. I remember when I was, um, it was actually right before I gave birth to my daughter and uh, the doctor comes in, the doctor in training comes in and he gives me my epidural. And I remember it's like this long needle and they put it in your back and then, in, and then inject the, the numbing medicine so that you're, you're numb and you don't feel as much pain as, as you would without it. And so I remember he put the needle in my back and then it somehow wasn't right. So he took it out and then he had to put it in again 
and it didn't work and took it out. And then the third time had to put it in my spine and then finally it worked. But that was just one of the just difficult situations that we experienced in that hospital. But, you know, I was just thinking about and remembering my stay there and the nurses, how they weren't very kind to me. And I remember feeling like they looked down on me, probably because they knew I was in high school. They knew at the time I wasn't married. Um, and during the birth, uh, you know, my, my, uh, the father of my child, which is my husband now, he was there with me, but it happened to be exam week for him during high school. Uh, he was in high school, so it was exam week that week. So as soon as our daughter was born, he had to go back to school. So. There was a couple of days that I had to stay in the hospital and my mom was working, my sister was working, um, the father of my baby was in high school, so I was alone. So I literally you know, looked like this girl that was just a mess. And I remember feeling you know, just so low and so um, insecure. And um, so it just, remind, it just you know, reminded me of that, of thinking about Mary and you know, she's this you know, engaged to be married to Joseph and the angel shows up at, to her doorstep and, and brings her this news that you are going to, to carry the child of, you're, you're going to carry the, the Messiah. You're, you're going to be pregnant with this baby and for her to immediately be able to accept that, that task from God is, was so amazing. Aside from my experience from you know birthing my first child, I can't imagine what Mary must have gone through when she was accepting this great task. But when Mary was about nine months pregnant, uh, the King Caesar Augustus made a, an official order to make count of, a, of the population so that everyone had to return to their village to be counted. The Roman officials didn't care that she was nine months pregnant. Her and Joseph were forced to make a 145 kilometer journey and which they say that probably took around nine or 10 days and probably on foot by foot through the mountains and along the valleys. And for those of you that have been pregnant with child, you could just imagine what that might have been like for her to, to, to go through. But in Luke chapter two, verses six and seven, it says, when the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. You know, I had many insecurities because of being a young mom, but I can't imagine how insecure Mary must have felt to be pregnant even, uh, even before she was even married to Joseph. You know, but in spite of any insecurities, the most powerful thing to me is that she still said yes to God. You know, I believe that when God was looking around and, you know, looking for someone to carry his son, he looked at Mary and knew, this girl will carry out my work. I mean, he must have known what kind of mom she would be. You know, God chose Mary for what could possibly be the most important job in all of history, bringing our savior, Jesus Christ, into the world. She was the perfect unlikely choice, which made her story even more amazing. But what if you could choose your mom? I mean, have you ever thought about that? Like, what if you could choose who you would want to be your mom? I mean, if you think about it, God did. I mean, think about all of the women of all of the times throughout all of history, and God chose Mary. I mean, that's a pretty high honor. That shows that there's something extra special about this girl. And the Bible also says that Mary was blessed among all women. And I just wanna share this story. It's actually called Chris, The Christmas Story Through Mary's Eyes. It was written by a Christian author, Lenore Booth. And I believe that it really can help us to, to feel and understand what Mary must have been thinking. So as I read it to you, I want you to try to imagine teenage Mary writing this in her diary. The day began like any other. Then suddenly there stood before me a radiant shining being who said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Somehow I knew it was an angel, but why would an angel come to me, a poor young girl who lives in lowly Nazareth? 
and why would I be highly favored? He said, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. I could make no sense of this, yet I felt my heart warm within me. I knew only that I trusted God. How will this be since I'm a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, for nothing is impossible with God. I could say nothing, but I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then I was alone again, my heart brimming over with wonder and joy. But what would I tell Joseph? Joseph, my precious Joseph, my betrothed, my fiance. Already we were considered married, but as was the custom, we were waiting out our year of engagement before we came together as husband and wife. What would Joseph say when he found out? What would he do? I felt a shiver of fear. He could accuse me in front of the elders and have me beaten in public. I would be disgraced alone, and this child would live in disgrace also. I sat a long time, praying, crying, trying to take it in. I swung from joy to sadness and back to joy and over and over again. Finally, I resolved the trust to trust the Lord no matter what. Joseph was stunned to find out that I was pregnant as any man would be. At last, he said he cared too much for me to see me judged. That dear righteous man would quietly seek a divorce. An angel of the Lord intervened and appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is inside her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. Joseph believed. Neither of us really understood, but we believed. God chose Joseph and me to be part of his miracle in sending his only son to earth. Joseph took me home, but we agreed, of course, we would not come together as husband and wife until after God's son was born. As I feared, the people in town whispered about my pregnancy. The men called Joseph a fool, but he paid no mind to them. He was my protector and my support. The emperor, Caesar Augustus, decreed a census should be taken of all the empire Roman world. Joseph and I belonged to the line of David, so we had to go from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the city of David, Israel's greatest king. Bethlehem was about 70 miles away. It didn't matter that I was in my ninth month. We had no choice. Caesar ruled his empire with an iron fist. Can you imagine my discomfort? Sometimes I walked and sometimes I rode side saddle on the donkey. Either way, I felt every jolt, every rock, every rut in the road. Toward the end of our journey, I neared the end of my strength. I held my aching belly as I walked. We were close to Bethlehem when I felt a sharp pain down low in my belly. I knew my time to give birth was coming soon, yet we had no place to stay. Joseph searched the town, pounding on doors, frantically inquiring of innkeepers. There were no rooms, not anywhere. There was no place for us. At least one kind man took pity and told us we could stay in his stable. A stable for God's son? Oh, well, at least we would be out of the cold air and might have a bit of privacy. The innkeeper lent us a small oil lamp. We watched as it light, its light danced and flickered on the rough walls and listened to the soft sounds of the animals. Joseph did what he could. He spread out a garment for me and helped me lie down on it. What a relief. My swollen feet throbbed and my whole body ached. We had only the warmth and the smell of the animals, only our love for each other, only the waiting for God's son to be born. Then the labor pangs began in earnest, growing qu quickly and stronger. I know not how long I labored, trying not to scream. Joseph stayed by my side, his eyes filled with tears as he stroked my forehead and whispered my name over and over. I still hear him, Mary, Mary. I urged to push, the urge to push grew so strong I could not resist. With one final push and a long sigh, my labor was over. God's son, the savior, the long awaited Messiah was born. I could not hold back tears of joy. 
I looked into my baby's face and wondered what the future might hold for this little one. Then I wrapped him in some soft cloths I brought with me. After a while, I laid the child on top of fresh hay Joseph had spread in the manger, the cleanest place in that cattle barn. We never could have imagined what would come next. A group of shepherds burst into the stable. They went to the major and gazed down at Jesus and then bowed down in worship. I saw a glow on their faces as if they already knew who he was. After a while, they told us what brought them to the manger. They were out on the Bethlehem hills as usual, guarding their sheep against the thieves and animals attack. And suddenly everything around them shone bright and they fell to the ground. And then an angel appeared and said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Before they could speak a word, the sky filled with the great company of angels, all of them singing and praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men. Just as suddenly the angels were gone, the shepherds could hardly contain themselves. One said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing. So they abandoned their sheep and they ran as fast as they could to find the Savior, Christ the Lord, there in that lonely manger, just as the angels said. Why were any of us surprised? Centuries before Jesus was born, there lived a prophet of God named Isaiah. He foretold that a virgin would be with child and give birth to a son who would be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. For as for me, I never stopped thanking God for choosing me to be part of that glorious night. And I never got used to the fact that when God stepped into our world, almost no one paid attention. And I want to ask you today, are you paying attention? You know, there must have been something amazing and something special about her that God would choose her to bring forth this amazing task. And the the point that I want to share with you today is that there was an interruption in Mary's life that day and she was available. You know, How many interruptions have we faced this year? I mean, I think that we could all agree that 2020 has been pretty much a year full of interruptions. You know, I love um, in Luke, all of a sudden it says, Gabriel appeared to Mary and he said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. You know, in other words, basically, if we could just speak it in today's terms, we could say, You know, the angel showed up and said, hey, don't be afraid, Mary, 13-year-old Mary, don't be afraid, but you're pregnant. Yes, you're still a virgin, but you know what? You're pregnant and you're going to be called names. Your life will be in danger, but don't worry because you're highly favored. And and I got the news that I was going to be a mom. My life was interrupted. You know, my high school life was interrupted. My friends and my social life was interrupted. I remember my sleep life was even interrupted. My life was completely interrupted. But many times, you know, your life has interruptions, whether it's because of consequences of what you did or maybe it's just for situations that just come up. But I believe that God would want us to learn from Mary on how to respond to them, that she had this posture of being available to God. And man, one thing I love about her is that she didn't doubt that God was going to use her to make a difference in the kingdom of God, that she knew she was a village girl. She knew that she was from this small town of Nazareth that wasn't even on the map, but she also knew God. And you know, when this messenger angel came to her that day, she was available. She says, hey, you know what? Whatever it is that you've said to me, let it be done. And I believe that that is the heart that God wants us to have for him. You know, as we, you know, end or we're coming close to the end of this year, 2020. And I believe that many of you have experienced interruptions. 
that have been uncomfortable, you know, that maybe just showed up one day and you've had to face some things that you weren't expecting. But I love how there, there was this interruption in Mary's life that day and she was available and God did the greatest miracle I believe that the world has ever seen. And God brought salvation to the earth through this little teenage girl because she was available. And I believe just the same that God is looking throughout this earth and he's looking for his followers and he's looking to see who is available that could, could you know, take an interruption in their life, in their everyday life. And when he, you know, calls or when he wants to call us to do something for him and his kingdom, he is wanting us to have this heart that is available. Could you imagine the things that God wants to do in your life? You know, I, I'm thinking about many of you and I know many of you and in, in your stories and, and, and I've heard a lot of the things that you've experienced even during this year and during this pandemic. But what I do know is that there is no coincidence in God. And I know that, you know, when bad things come sometimes, what the enemy intends for evil, God turns to good. And when we keep our eyes focused on Him and when we keep our hearts intimately um, with Him, that He will lead, He will guide, He will guard your steps. And so that's what I want to pray with you today is that, that we would be able to see the interruptions in our life, the interruptions through this year, and see them as God wanting to do something in our life. And all we need to be is available. That's all he's asking for you. You never know what kind of things that God wants to use you with and what God wants to do in your life by just being available. So let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you, God, for every person, Lord, listening right now. Lord, I know that, Lord, you are at work in their heart. God, I pray if anyone is listening and they have not received you as their Lord and Savior, that God, today is the day of salvation for them. That God, I pray that they would um, be able to experience you and ask you into their heart, Lord, so that you can live in their heart, Father. And, and I thank you, Lord, God, for the ones that are listening that when I, when I mentioned this about interruptions, Lord, God, it really resonated in their hearts. Because I, I know a lot of times when we walk through things that we just focus on those negative parts. But God, I believe that today by the power of your Holy Spirit that you are changing our perspective, Lord. That what we, we once saw as negative interruptions, that God, you can change our perspective, God, that we can see that you are definitely working in our life, God. In whatever situation, Lord, my brother or my sister is going through, that you are working in that situation. Father, I pray that, God, today that you would renew hope, Lord, where there was hopelessness, that, God, you would build the faith of, of your people, Lord, today, God, that they would be able to know and see that your hand is on them, that, God, you are with them, Father, and, God, that, Lord, you have a great hope and a great future for them. And just like Mary, Lord, God, that she didn't even think twice. Lord, she, she understood that there was an impossible situation. She was a virgin that was going to be pregnant and with child. But Lord, she immediately said, whatever you say, Lord, let it be. Let it be done to me. I'm your servant. And God, that's what we pray today, God. Lord, we are your servants. And so whatever it is that you want to do in our life, Father, let it be, God. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. And I thank you for this miracle, Lord, that we can still read about 2,000 years later, Lord, where you sent your son, Lord, through this young girl, Mary, and we can read about her and her life and her humility, oh God, today. And God, that it can minister and help us, Lord, in our walk and our relationship with you. Lord, we love you so much. God, I ask that you would cover these words, that you would bless the listeners, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I thank you so much for joining in today. I hope that you have an awesome week, that you tune in on uh, Christmas Day for a special Christmas uh, message from Pastor Chris. And then next Sunday, we have an, uh, it's the last series, the last of our series, The Cast for Christmas. We have one more special message. So don't miss it. And I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas. God bless. Love you all so much. 
Pastor Carrie will love seeing you and hearing to your message. What a timely sermon for this Christmas series, and we hope that all of you can take that message, carry with you throughout this week. Yes, and church, know that we are here for you. If you need prayer for anything right now, if you find this season particularly challenging and you want support, prayer, encouragement, or if you have any questions, we would just love to come alongside with you the best that we can. Click on this link or send us an email. We would love to pray with you. We hope you have an amazing week and Merry Christmas!